Do you feel ignorant because you don't know numbers? You don't know which one go which way and they got all these marks and things on them? I know, honey, it's hard. But there is a solution. Fort Ben Tutoring. And now here go Mr. Whit. Explain math to us, Mr. Whit. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. How you doing? This is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring and today our lesson is going to be about graphing linear equations using the slope intercept form. Let's check it out. Alright, here we are. The slope intercept form, ladies and gentlemen, of a linear equation is y equals mx plus b. The m, ladies and gentlemen, is going to stand for the slope and the b is going to represent the y-intercept. In other words, that's where the line crosses the y-axis. The slope, which which is represented by M most of the time, is equivalent to the rise over the run. Our rise goes up and down, our run goes left to right. The B value, that Y intercept, is going to be the number that we're going to start graphing our line when I use the slope intercept form, that Y equals MX plus B form of the linear equation. So, that we got all that out of the way, let's go ahead and look at some problems, shall we? Alright, let's check it out. In our first example, I have y equals two-thirds x plus two. So notice how this is in the same format as y equals mx plus b. So what you want to get from this, ladies and gentlemen, is you want to get your slope value is going to be the coefficient of the x term. In other words, that number in front of x, that's going to be two-thirds. That's going to be your slope. That's that rise value of two, the run value of three. Also note, ladies and gentlemen, that it also is possible to graph this using negative two over negative three. Because remember, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So either form of the slope will be just fine in order to graph it. The next number that we'll need, ladies and gentlemen, is the y-intercept. That's that b value. So in this case, my b value is 2. And as I told you before, we're going to start graphing with the b value, that y-intercept. So let's take a look at our graph. We're going to start with a b value of 2, as I've shown you here. So on the graph, on our Cartesian plane, on that rectangular coordinate system, I'm going to plot 2 on the y-axis. So there's my first point. Then, using the slope, ladies and gentlemen, which is 2 over 3, or you can use the negative 2 over negative 3, I'm going to rise two places, going up 2, and then I'm going to go to the right three places. The reason why I'm going to go up is because my numerator is a positive 2. So a positive 2 in the numerator is a positive move up the y-axis, so I go up. If it was a negative 2, I would go down 2. Same thing goes for the denominator with the run value. If my run value, if the denominator is a positive value, I'm going to move to the right. If it's a negative value, I'll move to the left. So let me show you how I implement that on the graph. So, starting out with your y intercept value of 2, I'm going to go up 2 places because of the rise value, 1, 2, and then I'm going to go over to the right 3 places because of the run value, 1, 2, 3, and then I'm going to make my second point. So, once I have those two points on my graph, ladies and gentlemen, all I have to do is connect the dots and put arrows on both ends, and that's my graph. That's it. Done and done. So once again, my original equation is y equals two-thirds x plus two. We need two values from this equation. We need to know what the slope is in order to write it as rise over run, write it as a fraction always, that slope value. And my b value is the y-intercept. That's where I'm going to start on the y-axis. So notice on my graph, I started at two on the y-axis. I then used my slope value, and I'll write it here for you. My slope value was two-thirds. So from this point, I went up two and then over to the right three and I put another point there and then connected the two points and that was my line. So that concludes problem number one ladies and gentlemen. That's it. Slope intercept form. This is my favorite way to graph ladies and gentlemen. So I hope you like it. All right. Problem number two I have 3x plus y equals to negative three. 3x plus y equals to negative three. What I want to do first in this equation is I want to solve for y. Because I always want my equation written in slope-intercept form if I'm going to use the slope-intercept form method to graph it. All right. There you go. So let's subtract 3x to both sides. 
So here we are solving for y. I bring down my variable y, which now equals to negative 3x minus 3. The two values that I need from this equation, once I have it in slope-intercept form, is the slope which is going to be negative 3. And since that's an integer, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to write it as a fraction as negative 3 over 1. So this is going to be the form of the slope that I use. Anytime I have to graph my linear equation by hand, I want my slope written as a fraction. So no matter what the number is, I'm going to always write it as a fraction so that I know clearly what that rise value is versus what the run value is. Okay, the next value I'll need is the y-intercept, that b value. And in this case, my b value would be negative 3. And remember, the b value is where we start graphing on our rectangular coordinate system, ladies and gentlemen. So, we're going to start by placing a point at negative 3 on the y-axis. So here I am plotting 3 on the y-axis. And then from there, I'm going to use the slope value that I have as negative 3 over 1. You could, ladies and gentlemen, assign the negative to the denominator as well. So you could very well have used 3 over negative 1, and that would have been correct as well. All right, so let's write that a little better. There we go. You could have also used the version of positive 3 over negative 1. So it's up to you to decide whether that negative remains in the numerator or if you want to place it in the denominator. Either version of the slope would be absolutely correct. It's up to you which one you want to use. So I'm actually going to use this version of the slope. I'm already at the bottom of my screen, and I'm also already at the bottom of my graph. So I don't want to really go down any further. So by using this version of the slope, I can go up three places from the y-intercept, one, two, three, and then over to the left one place, and that gives me my point right here. Once again, if I use the other version of the slope, this negative 3 over positive 1, I would still end up with the exact same line. You would just have a point at a different location on the line. All right. Now that I have my two points, I'm going to connect them with the line, make sure that I have arrows on both ends, ladies and gentlemen, and this is my graph of the line. So once again, this is the graph of the equation, y equals to negative 3x minus 3, which I already rewrote from the original problem. We originally started out with the equation 3x plus y equals to negative 3. I solved for y so I could put it into slope-intercept form, that y equals mx plus b form. And then from there, I was able to get the slope, which is negative 3, and the y-intercept of negative 3 as well. When it comes to the slope, ladies and gentlemen, I want to always write the slope as a fraction. So I rewrote it as negative 3 over 1. And you can also choose to use positive 3 over negative 1 because both of these will simplify to give you a value of negative 3. That's why either version of the slope will work. Done and done. We plotted our b value on the y-axis, that negative 3. I then went up 3 and over to the left 1 using that second version of the slope that I showed you, that positive 3 over negative 1. And that was my graph. Yeah, just like that. Just like that. Let's keep it moving, ladies and gentlemen. Keeping it moving. Problem number 3. I have y equals to negative 4 thirds x plus 4. In this problem, once again, we're going to grab the coefficient of the x term. So the number in front of the x variable, once you have that equation solved for y, your slope is always going to be the number in front of the x term. Okay? So I have a rise value of negative 4. I have a run value of positive 3. Or you can choose to have a positive rise value and a negative run value. Either way, ladies and gentlemen, you'll end up with the same line. So it's up to you to make that decision. From there, I also need to find the y-intercept. Where is this b value going to lie on the y-axis? So it's going to be at 4. So my y-intercept is 4. As an ordered pair, ladies and gentlemen, remember, that point would be simply 0, 4. So if your teacher ever asks for the y-intercept as an ordered pair as a point, you can always write it as 0, 4. But for our purposes here, we can just simply know that the y-intercept is 4. All right, so let's start by plotting that on our graph. So on the graph, we always start with the y-intercept. 
So I have four right here on my graph. Notice that I'm already at the top of my graph that I have drawn here, correct? So I'm going to use the version of the slope that's going to bring me down from that point. So I'm going to use the negative 4 over positive 3. Because what the negative 4 in the numerator tells me is to go down 4. So I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4 places from my y-intercept. And then I'm going to move over to the right 3 places. So I move over 1, 2, 3, and then I make my second point there. Okay. So once again, we started with the y-intercept on the y-axis at 4. Then using this version, ladies and gentlemen, the negative 4 over positive 3 version of our slope, we were able to go down 4 from that y-intercept and then over to the right three places for the run because of that positive 3 in the denominator. From there, I'm going to connect my dots here and put arrows on both ends. And that is going to be the graph of our linear equation, ladies and gentlemen. So the graph of y equals negative 4 thirds x. Once again, I'll write it right here for you. So the graph of y equals to negative 4 thirds x plus 4 is just as you see it there, ladies and gentlemen. Done and done. Okay. That wasn't bad, right? Okay, so let's move on to the next problem. In our next example, we have y equals 4 fifths x minus 4. So notice that this equation is already in slope intercept form. So my slope is going to be 4 fifths. And I could also choose to write it as negative 4 over negative 5 because that 2 will simplify to a positive 4 fifths. So either version of the slope you can use to graph the line. Then my y-intercept, that b value, is going to be negative 4. Remember, we always start with our y-intercept value. So I'll be plotting negative 4 on my graph first. So here I have negative 4 plotted on the graph because that's where I start with the y-intercept. Then, since I'm already at the bottom of my graph here, I'm going to use this version of the slope, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm going to start at negative 4 on the y-axis. I'm going to move up 1, 2, 3, 4, and then go over to the right 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And this gives me my second point that will be on my line. And so now all I need to do is connect the dots arrows on both ends. So this is going to be the graph of y equals to 4 fifths x minus 4. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, good stuff. Let's see what we have next. In problem number 5, notice that we don't have a y variable in it. So we can't necessarily write this in slope intercept form. However, I can solve for x. So what I'll do is I'll divide both sides by 3. So once I divide by 3, I can rewrite this as x equals to negative 4 thirds. This equation, ladies and gentlemen, you should recognize as a vertical line. Anytime you have an equation in the format of x equals to a number, this is always a vertical line, ladies and gentlemen. Always a vertical line, every single time. You're dealing with a vertical line if you see it in the format of x equals to a number. So that means that in order to graph this, all I have to do is go to negative 4 thirds on my x-axis and draw a vertical line. Now, if you're not certain where negative 4 thirds is, you can simply change this improper fraction into a mixed number. We know that the result will be negative because we started out with a negative value. And 3 goes into 4 one time with a remainder of 1 over our denominator of 3. So negative 1 and 1 third is the same thing as negative 4 thirds. So that's always helpful to do when you're graphing something by hand is if you encounter an improper fraction that you have to graph, whether it be for the y-intercept or you're graphing a line, then you can always change that improper fraction into a mixed number. All right, into a mixed number. So here is going to be my next step. On the x-axis, negative 1 and 1 third is going to be a little bit beyond to the left of negative 1. So I'm going to make a point right here. All right, and then from there, I'm going to draw a vertical line right through that point on the x-axis and put arrows on both ends. And so I have my graph of x equals to negative 4 thirds. All right. Once again, we went ahead and changed that negative 4 thirds into a mixed number so that we would know exactly where it lies on our x-axis. So that helped out a lot. We converted that negative 4 thirds to negative 1 and 1 third. 
So ladies and gentlemen, that concludes this lesson, graphing linear equations using slope-intercept form. And please, please, please rate, comment, and subscribe. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to get in on our intros and outros, please send your audio and or your video to fbt at tutormemath.net, and we'll use your intro in our next video. All right, thanks a lot. This is Mr. Witt. Bye-bye. So what you waiting on? Everything is online. Just hit the website. They even got FaceTime. Subscribe to the YouTube. Request the video. Watch your math skills go from all right to incredible. They got math, got algebra, got geometry. Pre-cal calculus, can't forget trigonometry.